of Jerusalem should be built to the glory of our Lord. And it please the king here. Hello, Kinski. Then came Sambala. Then came Tobiah. Yes, so our meeting. None of us here present will be someone else in the house of the Lord. But Nehemiah stood up, Nehemiah stood up there in the power, in the anointing of the Holy Ghost. today, you are here. My favorite part is coming. The God of heaven, he will prosper you and I. And so arise, 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 and let us build. The God of heaven, he will prosper you and I. And so arise, 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 and let us build. Say, so why this question, eh? Hmm. Yeah, yeah. yeah. A human in Mirini, a human in Mirini was sworn and made so boy, so boy, a human in Mirini, a human in Mirini was sworn. Let's stand for the Lord, let's fight to save our homes, let us all pray for our nation. With oneness of mind, yeah, and oneness of heart, yeah, let us arise in might and do the work. Adishime Jobe, yeah. Ejuma ni miri ni, Ejuma ni miri wa so, binyanume Jobe. A human in me, a human in me, was so. Joy, a human in me, a human in me, was so. Aha, the reggae moves. You see me, my dashiki, and my locks. Bell, you are my son, my son, you are your son and me here. Bell, you Jumanimri Wasun. 
And for our international listeners, it simply means that it simply means that the work, the time for the work is now. The time for the work is now. Hello, everybody. You know how we do it here. It's Raina Speaks. It's another Thursday. And I want to say profound welcome to you. And thank you for joining. God bless you for taking time off your busy schedules to come and listen to us today. Now, today we're going to be talking about something that is very important that seems to have no importance in most of the African countries. Even though when we go to the European countries, we seem to be able to just fit perfectly into it and give all kinds of excuses as usual. And here I am, Reina, representing today in my dashiki top and my locks. I know that you all know what this locks is about, but here I am in my locks, and I love my locks, dear good locks. Let's not even get into that. Go vote if you want me to talk about what's happening recently in Ghana, and I'll do that, but not here today. Today we're talking about about work ethic. Work ethic. Everybody has an idea about what they think work ethic is. But today we want to try, remember that we do not always do extensive, um, I mean, we are not the final authority on, on the things we discuss. But we try and glean from all kinds of places and then we make sure that we are representing the best for the general public. So welcome one more time and let's get it going. So what is work ethic? What is work ethic? Now, when I went to the dictionary, this is what it said work ethic is. Work ethic is a belief that work and diligence have a moral benefit and an inherent ability, virtue, or value to strengthen character and individual abilities. So you, you, if you were just saying, oh, work ethic is work ethic, it's actually a belief. It can actually be a religion. Believe me, work ethic is a belief that the work you are doing and the diligence you add to the work that you are doing has benefit morally to you and, um, and it has the ability and the virtue or the value to strengthen your character and your ability. Any individual ability you have within you, it has the work ethic has the inherent ability to strengthen that ability you have and the character that you have. I think that it's safe to say then that anybody who does not have a good work ethic doesn't have a good character and does not even have any ability, per the definition. So it says, it goes on to say that it is a set of values sentence centered on the importance of work. The importance of work. Work is important and work ethic sentence on the importance of the work that you do, no matter what work you do. Are you a carpenter? Are you a teacher? Are you a doctor, a lawyer, an engineer? Are you a stay-at-home mom? All these things are work. And it says that it values on the importance of the work that you have chosen to do. It's a set of, of values that is centered on the importance of the work you, you do. And it is manifested. How do we know you have work ethic? When you manifest by determination or desire to work hard, then we know you have a work ethic. When you're you, you have a determination or a desire to work hard, regardless of the environment you find yourself in, regardless of the things going on there, when you work hard, it is assumed, it is seen, it is believed that you have a work ethic. So everybody um, can have a work ethic, but what is a good work ethic, which is what we are going to be talking about today? What is a good work ethic? So you can just have work ethic or you can have a good work ethic now it says people with good with a good work ethic have the ability to stay focused on tasks for as long as necessary to get them done let me say it again people with a good work ethic have the ability to stay focused on tasks for as long as necessary to get them done if you are a worker who starts something and doesn't finish, start something and does not give feedback, start something and cannot give a report on the thing you have done, according to this definition, you do not have a good work ethic. If you are a worker who starts something and cannot take it or see it through to the end, it says here that you do not have a good work ethic. So how do we know you have a good work ethic? is your ability to stay focused on whatever task has been given to you until it is completely done. 
whatever task is given to you until it is completely and com completely done. You are so focused on it that no matter what other things you have to do, you never change your focus on this particular task that must be done. If you have even four things to do, you see them all through. You are able to focus on them and see them all through. That is when you have a good work ethic. I hope that I've made myself clear with the definition. So like I said, we have the work ethic and then we have the good work ethic. You must stay focused and see the task through for us to say you have a good work ethic. So if you are somebody who starts something at work and never finishes, you do not have a good work ethic. You don't have the character that has a good work ethic. You, your, your individual abilities are... Uh, in three, like I say, a tosin, it means that it is not complete. It's just hanging in there. Yes. Yes. Um, focus, Sewa, yes. Kids, kids, stay focused on tasks and see through to the end. Yes, Sewa, the ability to start and finish your assigned task. Exactly. So if you work in a place and they say that this year our theme is getting more customers. This year our theme is making sure we get 100 clients. You do not do it for a week and stop. You are, you are willing to work hard until you see those 100 clients come to pass before you relax. Until it is done, you are not complete. The work has not been complete and we cannot say that you have a good work ethic. All right, let's go on. Now, 10 work ethics that we must see to say that you have a good work ethic. It is very surprising that I actually, I have a, I have an account on um, an app called Clubhouse. And I went there to try and glean information from people about um, what a good work ethic is or what work ethic is. And you'll be surprised to know that I got just two people, but the, the kind of stuff they said was very, very, very deep. I mean, it is like we are Ghanaians and we are in Ghana or we are in Africa. And the way we behave when we are in Ghana, immediately we get to America, the UK, Germany, immediately all our work ethics becomes perfect. Immediately becomes perfect. And one of the reasons that was given was because sometimes you want your work ethic to be perfect. But because of the environment you find yourself in, you find yourself kowtowing or kowtowing, kowtowing or kowtowing, whichever one, kowtow or kowtow. Bear when I said you should understood, kowtow, abi kowtow, whichever one. You find yourself kowtowing to the environment around you. Instead of sticking yourself up and making sure that your work ethic rubs off on the people, so they are more than me, so let me just subject my, let me just submit myself to what is going on here. Everybody is a while after. <laughs> Everybody is taking bribe. So let me take bribe. Everybody is coming to work at 10. Let me come to work at 10. Instead of being the one that shows a good work ethic, you just follow the norm. You just follow the norm. So these are the 10 things, these are the 10 things we look at to make sure that we can say you have a good work ethic. And you'll be surprised to know that most companies, most institutions, most places you work, are going to be looking at these things to give the staff of the year uh, most punctual. Most, this is where it is in these ethics that they get those people to be able to put the prizes. Now, if you are a worker and you are listening, it is good for you to listen. First of all, it is good for you to listen because then you can look at yourself and decide. So which of these things I am, am I not really um, strong in and then make myself strong in those things? Or you can look at it such that... Um, you can help your other workers who don't have these traits to develop them. And then the other thing is that when people are being chosen for certain positions, now you know why they were chosen for those positions. Some people do not look like they, they, they should be put in those positions. So some people don't look like they qualify. But their work ethic is so good that they are promoted to those places in spite of whatever qualification that you claim that you have. Remember that qualification is not the same as work ethic. And so you, might, you may have a very big qualification, but you do not have the work ethic that allows you to be promoted. So we're talking about the 10 work ethics. Good, Nana, welcome. Following Nana, welcome. Barbara, I just saw you. Welcome. Welcome, everybody. 10 work ethics. And the, 
the very first one is something I tell my staff all the time. Some of them just, they, they make it look like, even this one I'm saying, my staff are here today. I know that tomorrow when we go to school, it will look like something else. The first thing that it talks about is appearance. Appearance. That person, how do we know a person has a good work ethic? The first thing is the person's appearance. And it says here that the person displays proper dress. Displays proper dress. It means, first of all, your attire is proper. It is not faded. The armpits are not torn. Um, you have not shown a different style from what you are supposed to be um, wearing. It's not too short. It's not too long. Appearance. Your earrings are appropriate. Your hair is not messy. Your hair doesn't look like you are the only one in Ghana who does not know where the salon is, who does not know where the barbering place is. You, you display proper dress. Yes, so a proper dress code. Sometimes when you enter a school, you enter a bank, you seem to think that you have appeared at a club. Some people's dress is so short that you cannot understand why it is there the person chose to bring that show. Uh, yeah, and I'm going there. We go there on Rainier Speaks. We go there. Uh, so please, if you don't like going there, don't be here. We go there. You feel free and go. The dress is too short. It's too tight. It's too skimpy. I mean, is, is, it, is it a fashion show? Sometimes you enter a place and you all you can do is just, you're like, and I, I seem to think that the more civilized we come, it, it, we become, it looks like the shorter our clothes. I don't know what the, co the correlation is. It looks like the more, the more uh, educated you are, the less clothes you wear. I don't understand how it works, but you understand what I'm trying to say. It's too tight. It's too short. You, you have a lot of breasts. Instead of maybe buying an extra large, you bought a large. So, I mean, we can see all the geography. The hills and the mountains. You, 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 you get what I'm saying. You see. You have even made me stammer. Short, tight, and clingy. I don't know what it is you are looking for. Your hair looks like you have just been hit by a tornado. Your hair. It looks like you have just been hit by a tornado. As if on your way to work, you met a strong wind and the wind said, I want to be your friend. Today, me and you, we are friends. You've plated your hair. You've not kept it nice. Every day it looks it looks funny. That is not you are not displaying proper dress. Your shoes are totally worn out. Look, as far as you work, you can afford shoes. As far as you are paid, you can afford shoes. No, you don't have to go to a boutique to afford shoes. There are so many ways of acquiring good shoes. You see, so grooming grooming it says another uh, another part of the appearance is your grooming long nails that are dirty is not good grooming teeth teeth see mine there's no filter on my um whatever these days there are so many filters that you don't even know what is true and what is not true teeth that are not yellow and do not look like <laughs> Theo, the air is blowing my head that do not look like you have not bought toothpaste in the last 20 years your, as for your toenails, I don't want to go there because you're always wearing shoes. The day we, we just make the mistake and say, well, let us look at your toenails. Ha. In fact, we will not be encouraged to have toes again. You see? So good grooming. Your nails are short and if they are long, I mean, whatever it is your nails are, they should not be full of dirt. You know? Your teeth should look white. You You know? You should not have a smell. If you are somebody who sweats a lot, you should carry along a whole lot of things that you can use to clean yourself, not pour perfume on top of the smell. No. Bath well. Bath under, behind, besides, on top, below, very well. The guys are talking about toenails. As for the guys, I don't even want to go there about your toenails. I'm not even ready to go. That is another topic for another time about guys' toenails. I'm not going there today. But good grooming. So you first, this, your, your appearance shows your work ethic. When you appear to, at work, how you appear at work shows us whether you are coming to work or you are just another number. Hygiene. 
hygiene is all these things i'm saying we are still on appearance so we haven't gone anywhere appearance so you display proper dress good grooming hygiene some of us don't wash our uniforms we don't wash the clothes that we take to work we've worn them for one month our panties our braziers our boxer shorts boxer shorts gives me chills <laughs> when i said boxer shorts i suddenly developed chills you see so you are not hygienic when we even look in your handbag or in the backpack you've put on your bag, when we pour it out, we will see a quantity, uh, 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 water sachet, some rice that you ate, the rubber is inside. As a lady, in your bag, you should have different kinds of purses. Purses for pen, purses for makeup, purses for cards, these things. Yes, Cynthia, you will be addressed by the way you are dressed. It's true. Viviana Nochi. Colanda, Colanda boxes. <laughs> it is. Theodora, thank you very much. The work is rather coming to you. You have not come to work. It's like we have forced you to be there. So immediately we see your dressing, we realize that we have forced you to be there. And then another thing about appearance that is shocking, it says manners. Manners. Your manners show, you, you see, your, um, your manners show us your good work ethic. Some work is saying, I don't know what it is. As for Malcolm, eh, they should forgive me, pa. To these days, even them look, I want to commend a certain lady at um Malcolm in Kumase. She used to be at the Ahojo, um, she used to be at the Ahojo Malcolm. Now she's at the Santasi roundabout Malcolm. She's called Dorothy. Excuse me, she's called Dorothy. She's their manager. Since she entered that place, the way they behave has completely changed. She's a good manager. So, Dorothy, wherever you are. I'm commending you. You are one of the best managers I've seen in Melcom because Melcom, when we used to go to Melcom, if you enter Melcom, and you see, you need the thing, that's why. You need the thing. But if it were not that Melcom has a sort of monopoly in Ghana, they will lose a lot of clients. The ladies, they are rude. They are rude. So it says, manners. How you talk to people, your colleagues and the clients, Show us your appear when we when you appear to us. What do you say? How do you say it? Some of us, when we've seen people, we are not putting our nose hand in our nose. We are we are staring. I call it staring the pot. You stare the pot, then you will rub it on your dress. Some of us, the way we sit, when we are there, we have just sat like this. I wish it was a full video. The way we stand, manners. Please, everybody, look for manners on point on either Instagram or Facebook. Manners on point. Abna Eduse, she will teach us how to have manners. When you are sitting at the table, when you are talking to a client, when you are talking to your boss, when you are talking to your colleague, there are certain manners we must see from you. So how do we know you have a good ethic? The first one is when you appear to us in the morning. How you've dressed, how you've groomed yourself, your hygiene, and your manners is the first thing we'll get to, we used to know whether you have a good work ethic or not. Number two, attendance your attendance at work will let us know whether you have a good work ethic your attendance you first of all you must attend first of that simply means first of all you must show up the fact that you showed up and you showed up in with, with a good appearance shows that you have a good work ethic then as you have uh, you, as you are attending, you are arriving on time and you are leaving on time. So, work starts at 7. Then you get there at 7. You have a very bad work ethic. Imagine that you were marrying. You said 11 and we got there at 11. You wouldn't like it. You want us to get there early and wait for you. So a worker sh who, whose work starts at 7 should never get to work at 7. I mean, of course, there are days when things happen, but I mean, generally, you cannot get to work at 7 when work starts at 7. You must be punctual and reliable. You see? So we know that as for us for a queer mansa, no matter what happens, she will be there by 6.30. Every job you do, you must be there 30 minutes to an hour before it starts. 30 minutes to an hour 
before it starts. So you arrive on time and leave on time. When we say leave on time, what is the agreement you have with the people who you work with? What time are you supposed to leave? Is there an extended time? If there is, they discuss with you. You leave at the time you're supposed to leave. You arrive at the time you're supposed to arrive. It says that um, tells, in, tells um, whoever is in charge in advance of planned absences. In Ghana, we don't know that. In Obuasukra, there is worse. They just get up one morning, my tooth is paining me. And you have to understand. If you don't understand, then you have become a bad person. It says you must tell the person in charge in advance. If your tooth will pain you tomorrow, you should have envisaged that your tooth will pain you tomorrow and told the person last week. And the way I'm looking at it is my teeth will begin to pain me three, three, any moment from now. So please, I'm telling you. Yes. So don't just get up and go. You just get up and you leave. And you expect to come back to work and we should just accept you like that. No. 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 It also says that and makes up assignment promptly. Makes up assignment promptly. Whatever they have given to you is amazing. One of the things I see is that when you give people a deadline, then they bring whatever you've asked them to do on the day you said they should bring it. Now, when they have also brought the thing, it is not that it is perfect. Too. Now, they have to go back and make corrections. What you don't know is that you did not meet the deadline. If we give you a deadline of two weeks and you decide to wait to the last day to submit, it means that everything is perfect and you do not have to go and correct anything. And you have no, there is no problem with what you are bringing. Then you have met the deadline. But if you bring it and there's a correction to be done, you did not meet the deadline. You did not meet the deadline. So anything you've been told to do, you must do it promptly. You've been given two weeks, so you've taken your time until two weeks is over before you... You don't have a good work ethic. Your work ethic is bad. Meanwhile, you could have done the thing today, but because it's two weeks, or they said two weeks, bet they said two weeks. There's no rush. Number three says attitude. Attitude. This is very, very important. You may have come dressed very nicely. You may have good grooming. Your hygiene is on point. Your manners is on point. You've attended. You are, you've arrived at work very early. You are doing everything you are supposed to do. But your attitude shows that you don't want to be there. Your attitude at work shows that you don't want to be there. It says shows a positive attitude. What is a positive attitude? An attitude that encourages the people around them. An attitude that encourages that, oh, it's going to work, don't worry. An attitude that shows that I want to be here. It's a good thing that I am here. The, where I am is a good place. That's a positive attitude to work that shows us that you have a good work ethic. It says, appears confident and has true hopes of self. Do you see? So you believe that as you are coming to work, you believe that you've done enough research, you are prepared, you are well trained for the job that you've been asked to do. And then you, you are also confident that this work that has been given to me, I can deliver it and I can deliver it well. As for Ghanaian attitude at work, I let's, let's make it another topic. I remember that the first time I moved to Obas, I wanted to send a letter abroad, and there was a post office. And I went to the post office. When I got to the post office, the person I was supposed to be handing over the letter to had a big bed sheet in front of her with a needle and a thread. She was sewing her torn bed sheet in the office. And when I was giving her the letter, she wasn't even interested in listening to what I had to. She was, uh, okay, so, uh -huh, to the proceeding, uh, for him. Wow, Ramadu says, hmm, exactly what I'm talking about with a new lady I employed. I just sacked someone. Absence from work with unreasonable excuse. Ramadu, you have not seen anything. People have lied to me that their mother was dead. So they didn't show up at work. Meanwhile, it was a lie. Do you see? 
post office wahala is a thesis in its own believe me I say, well, your attitude at work you may have come nicely appeared nicely you are attending well but what is your attitude number four says character character and character is not something we do in at work and then at home we are totally different character displays loyalty displays loyalty please my staff on rena speaks we say it as it is so so i'm telling you now so that it doesn't look like do you see displays loyalty and we are not talking about you if you think we are talking about you then it's about you we are talking but it is not you it's a general thing that we are doing display what is loyalty you are working at one place everything you learn at that place then you move and go and tell another person somewhere you are a very disloyal person as for loyalty and disloyalty bishop daggy what mills has a whole book on loyalty and disloyalty i'm telling you if you are if you are a, an entrepreneur here teach it to your staff if you are a worker learn that book and you see that you are very disloyal in so many things you are a teacher at a, at a school you have classes that you do for children when you are going to do the classes then you take the curriculum you are using in your school and go and use it to teach the children your own private children it is this it is gross it's not just disloyalty it's gross disloyalty you can easily be taken to court and sued so you might what one of the character traits we must see that you have um we, we must see that shows us you have a good work ethic it's loyalty number two is honesty when something happens and we are asking you tell the truth don't lie don't lie they ask you the question immediately they ask you see sometimes and what we don't know is that when we ask you the question and you tell the truth immediately we can't continue immediately we said and you tell us the truth anybody who is asking you certain questions already has the information they need and the evidence they need they just want to give you a chance to get out of it so when you lie then you become you become annoying so now we do proper investigation bring out the facts and then we we disgrace you but if you, when we just ask you did you do it I, I did it or it was me you see that now we don't know what to do we are, we are stuck we don't know whether to continue to stay to come to go we are just there are you dependable another character trait is dependable we know you'll be there all the time we know you'll be there as you said it we don't have to supervise you to do your work. You are dependable. We can depend upon you. You are reliable. You will do what you said you will do. With little or no supervision, you will do it. You don't need us to be brooding over you. You don't need to see your boss coming or your, your, your HR coming. You don't need to see the person you are under coming before you do the work you are supposed to do. Are you dependable? Are you reliable? These are character traits that show us that you have a good work ethic. It says initiative. As for this one, it is dead in Ghana. It is completely dead in Ghana. Most people working in institutions, they don't have any initiative. They've come there, seen what the work is doing. Then they, they have just added something small and they are making it look like they've, they've mastered it as this. Initiative is there's a problem. When you came, you came to solve that problem. You saw a major problem. Then when you came, you looked at it, looked at it, weighed it, went, you researched on it, did this, did this, before we knew what was going on. Pop, you were the one who solved the issue. That is initiative. Or you felt that there was a need at the workplace. You looked at the need, you, you studied it a bit and said, ah, this thing, this is what can work. And then you brought it out and then the need was solved. You realized that there was something that if we add to it, it makes it better thought about it, researched about it, convinced your bosses, and then we added it to it, and it worked. That is a character trait. It's called initiative. It shows us you have a good work ethic. And self-control. Self-control. Self-control is something you must have wherever you work. Anywhere you work, there's an opportunity to steal. Anywhere you work, there's an opportunity for the clients to think that you are better than the person who employed you. 
Anywhere you work, there's an opportunity for somebody to convince you that you are not getting what you should get. You are not being respected as you, you, you should. And the character trait that will let us know you have a good work ethic is called self-control. There's the opportunity to steal, the opportunity to lie, the opportunity to take things that are not your own, the opportunity to, to add numbers, remove figures, do all kinds of things. But because of the self-control you have, you choose not to do any of those things. It shows that you have a good work ethic. You would think we are reading the Bible. This, this, this is nothing from the Bible. This is just normal work ethic. General, worldly, secular work ethic. So if we even come to Christianity, then as for you, you should be... When, if this, this were 10, you should be 100. Because as for you, your, your Bible demands it of you. Number five says communication. The way I have struggled with communication at work. You are saying one thing and the person is listening to it as an insult. Meanwhile, what you are saying has nothing to do with that. Communication shows you have a good work. How you communicate. This, it says displays proper verbal and nonverbal skills. Your body language. You are talking to your boss. Yes, boss. All right, so when do you want us to do it? And that's how you are behaving. Your nonverbal skills is 0 0.0000000%. Body language. These days, the young girls will be... Funny, funny, they will be learning. All right, boss, whatever you say. Eh, if you do that to me, I will look at you from the top of your head to the sole of your feet. The work I'll give you to do, you'll not be able to finish. By the time you finish, you can't throw your hand. Body language, non-verbal skills, and verbal skills. How you talk. You must learn the jargon, for example, for the work that you do. You must learn to put your tenses and your sentences together to be pleasing to the ear. Your, 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 your tone, volume tone. Hey, is that what they said we should do? Hey. Seriously. Learn to use your inside voice, your outside voice. Communication is very important. Body language. Sometimes when you are a very pretty young lady standing there, but when we finish talking to you, your body language has put us off. That's one way I always know someone is ready to work with a team as a team player. Body language. Sewa, so, well, thank you. Body language. has Many people have missed great opportunities because of body language. Many people have missed marriage partners, both male and female, because of body language. Many people have met great people without knowing that God had brought their way to bless them. But because of their body language, it didn't work. Number six, cooperation. Cooperation. Nobody works in at a job place on their own. Just like Sewa said, there's a team you work with. There's a team that you work with. So cooperation. You display leadership skills. There are some people that you cannot give any job to do. Any job you give them to do, whatever position you put them in, no matter how low, no matter how high it is, they will spoil it. They will do it well for a week, for a month, and then they will just completely destroy. Every worker must be able to display leadership skill. Leadership skill is not for a particular group of people. Anybody can be a leader if you want to be a leader. Anybody can be a leader if you want to be a leader. In any field, maybe you are not good at leading people, but you are good in making sure that the workplace is maintained. That's leadership. Anything we put you, um, we say you take care of this, you monitor this. We've given you a, mo a leadership position. Excuse me. We've given you a leadership position. And one of the ways we know you have a good work ethic is that you display leadership skills. So it means that if you are at your workplace and you 
You don't want to be involved in anything. You don't want to be given any position. You don't want, you are not interested in anything whatsoever. You just want to come and do your work and go. You have a very poor work ethic. And here you were thinking that the leadership position is for particular people. Anybody can be a leader. Just set your mind to it. Cooperation, he says, properly handles criticism. As for this one, it's a whole year's topic. Because you don't like criticism. You are Miss Perfect. Mr. Perfect. We shouldn't talk about you. We should not correct you. Anything you have done, we should accept it how it is. No matter how flawed it is, we should just accept it. It says here that if you are somebody who cannot properly handle criticism, you have a bad work ethic. You are a bad worker. That's what it means. It says you must properly be able to handle criticism, conflict, and stress. I'm tired. You just became tired, so we sh the whole school should stop. The whole institution should stop. Everything should stop. I'm tired. We immediately we see your face, we see you are tired. Immediately we see your face, we see that you are menstruating. Immediately we see your face, we realize that you and your girlfriend or your wife fought before coming. Immediately we see your face, we see that you are sick. Small headache. The whole world must know that you have a headache. You can't handle stress. We just, All of us went to do something at work. We all went to sleep at 12 midnight. We all came back at 7. You are the only one who looks like you were the only one who worked that whole night. <laughs> Cynthia. We all, we all put ourselves into the thing. When we woke up and we came to work that morning, you make it, make it look like you were the only one who was working that time. Only you. Superman, superwoman. Small stress, then you are, you, 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 you are sick. Small stress, then you are telling us you have to go to the hospital. You have a bad work ethic. You don't know how to handle conflict. If there's a disagreement between you and somebody, you stop talking to the person at work. You begin to show face and body language and attitude to the person. Like small children do. You do not know that we have to address the issue and not the person. And that no matter what happens, as far as many people are working in one place, there's bound to be conflict. So you just let it pass. And then when the opportunity presents itself, you simply call the person and say, I don't think that this is how we should have done this. It's better if we had done it this way. Simple and short. And we are gone. One conflict that happened three years ago at the workplace, you are still holding on to it up till now. Up till now, you are holding on to it. Up to now. I don't even know how God does it. Most of those people that are fighting and quarreling at work, when there's group work to be done, automatically, you don't know how God does it. They'll be the ones that they put together to go and work together. Let's see how you do that now. It says that maintains proper, we are still on cooperation, maintains proper relationships with peers and follows chain of command. So you maintain proper relationship with your colleagues. You don't talk to some and leave some. You don't, in Ghana, you say you are not free with some. And then you are, you, the other that you are not free with. I know two people are still fighting after eight years. So you, you, you maintain proper. When we say proper also, the proper also stands for something else. So maintain good relationship. Proper relationship means you talk to everybody, you, you, are, you, you are nice to everybody. Then proper relationship is also that if, for example, you are a man, proper relationship is that the relationship at work is what you are maintaining. Not you are a young man or you are a man at the workplace, you have gone to every woman that you like here. You hit women's buttocks. You'll be calling them at odd hours. That is not proper. You are not maintaining proper relationships. And likewise for the women. These women, the women these days are very bold. Call you 12 midnight. I had one who used to dream, dream about my her boss. I dreamed that we were here. Then I was like, ah, what is that? Why aren't you dreaming about the rest of us? At least if you be a Josephina, you be a Josephina for the benefit of everybody. Why is one particular person benefiting from the dreams? We don't understand. So proper relationships with peers and follows chain of command. 
Some people don't know that there's a hierarchy at work. Because they, they, maybe they are close to the boss or they are close to the manager or close to the director. Anytime something happens, instead of going through the chain of command, they just walk straight to the director, straight to this person. They don't want to go through the hierarchy. They don't want to go through what they must go through. They just come. It's a bad work ethic. Stop. Stop. Organize it. Number seven says you have good organizational skill. Organizational skill. Show skill in management. When we give you something to manage, we can go and come and be sure that you have used it as sparingly and as manageable as you could. As sparingly and as manageable as you could. You are a worker. We've given you a for sheet. Then we come and see in your bin that if you, you, we see a pile of crumpled A4 sheets in your bin. You are not a good manager. When we call somebody a manager, it means that that person has been given, the reason why we've given that person a manager over a group of people is to manage them and make sure that whatever they are given is used to the fullest ability and that it can be accounted for properly. So it says you show skills in management and dealing with change. Yes, if you are wasteful, you are not a good manager. You know how to deal with change. Last month you came and this was what was on board. This month we realized there's something new. Immediately we call, we call a meeting. We tell everybody that now this is how we are going to do it. Immediately we say that's how we are going to do it. You pick it up and you begin to move with it. You are not now, eh, we like changing too much. This one we've come to change again. The, the change that should have happened in a week, you are taking one year to change. You are taking one full year to change with a change that should have happened over a week ago. Number eight says productivity. Some people go to work, but they are not productive. Some people go to work, but they didn't come to do anything. They have filled the time book when you reach there. I remember sitting on the bank in Accra and watching a certain lady walk up, down, up, down. But I never saw her talk to any client. I never saw her holding a bunch of papers. I never saw her doing it. She just kept walking up and I said, so I asked myself, so this one too has come to work. Cindy says, where are my staff members? Ola? All female staff from KG to B6 come and see Tantrum Spa. Every day there's a meeting to solve a quarrel. They are very immature. If you can have them changed, have them change. Cindy, if they can be changed, have them change. If you are the one over them, they will, make, they, will, they will spoil your work. They will always make you look like a bad leader. I'm telling you. Productivity shows that you are good. You have a good work ethic. You follow safety practices. Safety, Ghanaians do not like safety practices. Everything here in your shame. Everything here in your shame. Remove this nail from there so that somebody will step on it. Oh, baby, nobody will step on it. Our safety practices in Ghana is, are very poor. Very, very poor. That is why, is it last week that I told you that a parent told me that I'm removing my child because we are, we are broke for you like be, You are too westernized. Over a pickup card that is a safety issue for the child. I'm too much of a, a white woman. She has to move her child from the school. It's my child. If she gets missing, so what? I mean, seriously. Our safety sense is very low. So anybody who tries to do a lot of safety is regarded as too low or as the woman said, too westernized. Too westernized. You must follow safety practices. It says you conserve resources. I've just talked about it. When you are giving something, you don't waste it because your money didn't buy it. You didn't get it. You don't know what, what they even went through to get it. So anything that is given to you, just waste it. You cannot account for it. When we ask you to pay, then you are upset. But you too, you are not using it well. 
and follows instructions. This one. Any worker that keeps telling you, I thought, that worker, first of all, that worker is disloyal. And then number two, sack that, that, that um, worker. I thought, after you've been told what to do, please make sure that this thing is sitting here every day. Then the person, you, you come and ask, why didn't you put this thing here? I thought that you said that. That person is a very disloyal person. That person is not there to help the business. That person is there to spoil the business. Any worker that refuses to follow instructions is there to spoil the business. Number, number 10, number 9, sorry, says respect. You see, these things I'm telling you, that's why I'm saying that these things, they are from different people I spoke to in the network. You hear these things every day, but it looks like, uh, what, uh, we've heard that uh, we are tired. Anywhere you go, any institution that is worth its salt will require these things from you to, make, to, to prove that you have a good work ethic. Number nine says respect. Deals properly with diversity. Shows understanding and tolerance. When we say diversity, one of the things is that you, 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 you are able to, it says deals properly, which means that I'm ashanti, you are away. We are diverse in our culture, in our understanding of things. So I don't begin to use your airwayhood or your asantihood against you. You know that just by the fact that we are different tribes means that our understanding will be different. You are able to work with children. You are sorry, yes, children. You are able to work with children from all walks of life. You are able to relate with your colleagues from all walks of life. If you have an American, a white American in your office and you have a black Kenyan in your office, you are still able to live with all of them together without trying to make one look better than the other because of um, ethnicity, because of background or where the person is from. You tolerate and understand the different temperaments that we have, the different backgrounds that people have come from. That is respect. And then the last thing we are talking about today is teamwork. Teamwork. Respect the rights of other, others. You respect the rights of others. So where you are packing, as you, how you have packed, I have talked about this before, how you've packed, is it okay? Will people get places to pack? Some people go to church, for example, this is my chair. This is where I sit. I don't understand. So when they even wear somebody sitting there, they want to move the person to go and sit. Well, I don't understand. What do you mean by this is your chair? I don't understand. Johnny! This is my chair. We don't have chair in church. We don't have church at work. We don't have a particular chair. As far as it is not... An office for maybe somebody designated for somebody and the chairs are sitting there. There's no particular chair for anybody. Sit and listen. Respect the rights of others. Don't try and be prying into people's things when they don't want to tell you. Leave them alone. It says, is a team worker. <laughs> Say what? Is a team worker. One thing I don't like hearing is, me, I've done my own. I've done mine. What is the meaning of you've done yours? There was a time at, at, at my institution that what I used to do is that I put everybody in groups. And I told them that until the last person is done, you cannot leave. So if you finish at 4 o'clock and the last person is not done at 6, you stay there. Teamwork worked. You see that those who close at 4 will quickly go and help those who close at 6 so that they can quickly finish and go home. That is how every worker must think. We are a team. Even though I'm done with mine, if this person is not done with theirs, we are not complete. We have not finished what we are doing. It's helpful. It's the same thing. Because you have finished yours, that's not me. You should not help somebody. You always want to be seen as the one who has done the best. You always want to be seen as the one who has done everything correct. You don't want to help anybody. Yours is always the media, I've done my media, I've done my media. It is a very selfish attitude and it is not a good work ethic. You are confident. Teamwork demands confidence. And when you help each other, 
And when you, when they to, when all of you come together and do something very good, you see that you are confident because you know that a little here, a little there comes together to make a very good thing. <laughs> Cindy, they are the ones that will not contribute when we are buying the chair simple. <laughs> you see? It says display displays a good customer service attitude. Some of the workers, are ve they drive away clients and then they will clean their face and come and say to them, we don't know why they've gone. Meanwhile, you didn't smile. How you spoke to the person was very uncouth. Your body language was very bad and you drove the person away. That's a bad work ethic because you must know that it is the client that pays you, not your boss. The client pays you and not your boss. Without the clients, your boss cannot pay you. Your boss cannot even employ you without the clients. So you must be very nice to the clients. No, I didn't say condone and connive with the clients and become a bad worker. No. Be nice to the clients so that they stay and you can get paid. That's what I'm saying. And then it says, and seeks continuous learning. And seeks continuous learning. Any worker who does not want to improve upon what they know, does not intend to improve, improve themselves, has a bad work ethic and is going to cause a lot of problems to you. Because as we move forward, that person will be stuck behind and be, and be conjuring co conspiracy theories. They don't like us because we've not gone to school. They don't like us because we don't know what these people know. They don't like us. Who is stopping you from going to school? Who is stopping you from improving yourself? Who? So as a worker, you must improve yourself. You must, you must, you, you must make sure that you are always learning. There's, there's so much learning in the world. The, the, the Bible says that of the making of no books, there is no end. And you can learn and learn and become so good. You don't even need to go to formal school. You can school yourself so well that you can become so well versed in what you are doing that we will think you've gone to formal school. Meanwhile, you have taught yourself. These are the things you must have. These are the 10 things you, you must display. The 10 work ethics that show us that you are a hard worker, you are a good worker, and that you have a good work ethic. I want to leave you today with something that Mary Lou Retton said. Mary Lou Retton. She says, working hard becomes a habit. Working hard becomes a habit. A serious kind of fun. You get self-satisfaction from pushing yourself to the limit, knowing that all the effort is going to pay off. Mary Lou Retton says, working hard becomes a habit, a serious kind of fun. You get self-satisfaction from pushing yourself to the limit, knowing that all the effort is going to pay off. Knowing that all the effort is going to pay off. So, I don't know. Are there any questions? Are there any contributions? Any questions? As for the contributions, they've come in, uh, and I'm grateful. So we've been learning about work ethic this evening. Thank you so much for joining. You know, I'm always grateful that you join and listen. Take time off your busy, busy schedules to come here and be here. Thank you so much for joining. God bless you. And this has been Raina Speaks Like. It is every Thursday. See you next week. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Raina Speaks. Follow us on Instagram at Raina Speaks 8. Join our group on Facebook, Raina Speaks. Share, like, comment and invite people onto the group. Remember that you must arise and do the work that God has given to you, and your good ethic will show you and give you more promotion. God bless you, and have a lovely, lovely weekend.
Thank you, Cindy. Jerusalem. Bye, everybody. God bless you.